Back on the Chamber Report, and I bet a lot of you are watching this one, it is an update on the Highway 10 project, as you know, last year. And if you're a watcher of this show, uh, a couple of months ago we had Kent Barnard on from the Minnesota Department of Transportation give us a uh, wrap-up kind of of year one. Well, we are about ready for year two. Kent, welcome back to the show. Thank you, Pete. Glad to be here. So appreciate uh, you being here and, and helping uh, people get answers to questions. Uh, obviously, everybody's aware of the project because year one is done. This is really like a, a two-year project slash maybe just a little bit extra into a third year. But the reality is, is that as we head into year two of this construction, um, this is really going to kind of get that road pretty much done. The nice thing is, is this is the last year of traffic impacts out on Highway 10. There's going to be some work in the spring of 2024, but it's not going to have much of an impact on anybody. Sweet. All right, let's talk about 23. So last year we saw kind of half of the road uh, done in some spots. We saw West Main Interchange done. Now we're dealing with some uh, interchanges that are going to have some impacts, and everybody knows it. But talk everybody through kind of what you see happening as we get ready to kick off this year or two of Highway 10 construction. Well, starting on the east end of the project, we're going to be rebuilding the eastbound Highway 10 bridge over the Rum River, and there's going to be some work on 7th Avenue Bridge, so there will be some closures and detours there. Then moving west from there, we're going to be building the new Ferry Street Spewey. It's a single point urban interchange, and the 47 169 bridge will be down for the construction season. There will be access at times to get off and either go north or south at the interchange, but at some point, all of the ramps will be closed to reconstruction. Then as we move further west, we're going to rebuild at Fair Oak. Now, hopefully people realize that Fair Oak will be going beneath Highway 10 and there will be no access once that's built, but we're gonna be rebuilding, or building actually, the new westbound Highway 10 bridge. Yep. And then out to Thurston and Cutters Grove, we're gonna be building the new westbound bridge there. So during these construction projects, or these parts of the project, people will have to detour uh, and follow the sign detours for us. You know, and it's not like we, we haven't been doing it. You know, we dealt with it last year from time to time. And, I, and I'll tell you what, I've been at the chamber a long time, and anytime construction projects have occurred, our offices really kind of exploded with tons of questions and, and all of this. That didn't happen so much with Highway 10, and I think for a couple of reasons. Number one, everybody's been hearing about this project for a long time. Number two, everybody knows this is a biggie, and we need to get this done. And to see this kind of money being spent up here is exciting. And number three, MnDOT's done a great job of answering the questions, whether it be open houses or regular meetings with business people or the hotline number or the website. Uh, it, it's been it's been a, a tremendous effort by a whole lot of people to get the word out and educate people, and that's what this is about. All right, so Kent... Um, the biggie, obviously, is going to be Ferry Street. A lot of people use that road, uh, but but it is time for this to happen. Um, and, I mean, I'm ready for it. You had mentioned that, you know, basically that road pretty much is going to be closed for the construction season. So what, in your mind, is the construction season? And I know that weather plays a part in that. Yes, we're just like farmers. Generally, we look at the construction season as being between March and about November, give or take. We obviously want to get done sooner because we get a better product, but we could be doing things out there even in November. Okay, and and we are in the month of March. It could start this month, and again, that's just a, a stay tuned. You can check that website out and yeah. find that out, but if we've got an easy March, we can have a construction season that'll start. If we have a tough one, that might push back a little bit. Absolutely. Uh, I would like to, you brought up the uh, website. I would like to mention that we had a meeting back in February, very well attended, and we have a presentation on our website from that meeting people can watch. Uh, also, please go to our website, www.mindot.gov, look for Highway 10 Anoka, and sign up for our email updates. Yeah, they're critical. I get those. Uh, I share those with our chamber members as soon as uh, Kent and crew get them to me. Um, it's important for business to be able to know, and I want to touch on that for a quick second, too. Talk about business. You know, road construction, when it's right in your backyard or your front yard, depending on the business, it's going to affect you. And there has been effect on those businesses that are there, and even ones that may be not close to it, but people just like, oh, I just want to get out of the area. 
I would urge you if, the, if you have the opportunity and the time, because the businesses are all open and will be open all through construction. I was able to get to Culver's, I was able to get to McDonald's in Anoka, um, and uh, also to the Speedway there. The roads, you can get there, and it wasn't that difficult at all, but it's about taking that extra little bit of time, it's not gonna be a ton of time, but an extra little bit of time, trust me, you spending your money at those businesses when they are affected during a, a construction scenario like this, is gonna be the world to them, and I hope that you will take the opportunity to do that. So Kent, um, as we move through Anoka and we finish in 2023, and before, uh, let's face it, before you know it, November's gonna be here, and, and man, we're done. And the, the work that has been done, I use West Main Interchange all the time. I finally got the Turok Memorial of 4th Avenue Bridge reopened. It's not Turok Memorial, it's just I use it all the time. It is beautiful. That's the, why we rebuilt it, Pete. Oh, there you. you go. I, I miss that bridge. You know, I, I'm an old Anoka kid, so I back road when I'm heading to Andover or, or some of the areas that I go to, and I, I really miss that bridge, and I'm glad that it's back. Um, but man, the work is good. You guys, the look, I like the design work and, and the way that this thing looks, uh, have seen uh, what uh, uh, has been out there. And hey, and by the way, um, roundabouts are not an evil thing. You can figure it out. It's not that tough. Do not be afraid. And do you guys have a video on how to drive a, a roundabout? Well, coincidentally, QCTV did a video. That's where I And uh, we've got that linked on our website. So if you want to know how to use a roundabout, uh, we thank our friends here at QCTV. I'll tell you what, I, I, I didn't think I'd be a fan of, of roundabouts right out of the chute. Uh, and, and we've got them in Champlin, and I live here. And I will tell you what, I love the fact that probably nine times out of ten, I do not have to stop where before. I, it was 100% of the time I was stopping. There's a reason why there are roundabouts and why the Minnesota Department of Transportation and pick your state and pick really your country. These things are there and they're there for a reason. But Much safer for traffic. Is, is that true? I, 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 yeah, that makes sense to me. Uh, and, and I would bet you, that especially the people that are afraid, would would say no. Uh, it's more of a traffic hazard. And the reality is, is it isn't. The crash like a T-bone type crash. Sure. And people are moving slower. You bet. So. All right, so Anoka 23, we're about ready to kick it off. And here's some great news, and this is a, a part of a longer term project. We've got some activity that will be occurring in Ramsey on a two year project. Yes, we're gonna start some preliminary work later this summer on Highway 10 at Sunfish Lake Boulevard and at Ramsey Boulevard. They're going to be similar to Armstrong when they're done. They're gonna be an overpass, and it's actually gonna go over the railroad tracks too, so even that much safer. Think about that. All the lights on Highway 10 are gonna be gone. It's been the goal of this thing for a long, long time for a whole lot of people, and it is critical to the growth of our future growth as we move toward these years. I'm so excited for that, to see that uh, residential growth, to see the commercial growth that's gonna come for it, because I can tell you in talking to some property owners that we have lost projects in our region because of those lights. They've gone to 94, they've gone to 35W, and not that those areas are bad, but we've lost those opportunities here. The elimination of those lights is gonna open that door for us, and what's gonna happen after that is exciting. Now, the one thing, Kent, and, and I know they're going, oh, man, I didn't know we are doing Ramsey for two more years, uh, but four lanes are gonna be open. Yes, that's part of the pre preliminary work starting this summer is we're widening out there. We're adding a temporary lane in each direction. So whereas Anoka and things are a little older, a little tighter, so you've got single lane stuff from time to time, uh, and really for most of the construction time, I would imagine, but when Ramsey happens, the plan is four lanes. Four lanes will be open, that is huge. All right, Ken, somebody out there's got questions. Uh, they're looking for answers. Uh, tell them how they can get those about the Highway 10 project. Come to our website, www.min.gov, and there's a list right on the front page, just basically right from the top, and you can click on any of the highway projects, actually, but look for Highway 10 in Oka, and if you got questions, go ahead and send us a comment. Excellent, and we have those links also available on the front page of the Chamber website. Uh, Kent, come back uh, maybe as things are getting close and you can tell us how things are going. Absolutely. Excellent, he is Kent Barnard, he is with the Minnesota Department of Transportation. Short-term pain, long-term gain. I've been saying it since it started, 
And it's true. All right, we're taking a break. When we come back, we are going to wrap up this edition of the Chamber Report. We'll do it right after this. Cool. You are good. You are well. very good.